Hallelujah, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, whose Son Jesus is the Good Shepherd of your people, grant that when we hear his voice, we may know him who calls us each by name and follow where he leads, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 4, verses 5 through 12. The rulers, elders, and scribes assembled in Jerusalem with Anas, the high priest, Caiaphas, John, and Alexander, and all who were of the high priestly family. When they had made the prisoners stand in their midst, they inquired, By what power or by what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people and elders, if we are questioned today because of a good deed done to someone who was sick and are asked how this man has been healed, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that this man is standing before you in good health by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified whom God raised from the dead. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders. It has become the cornerstone. There is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among mortals by which we must be saved. The word of the Lord. Thank you, God. The psalm appointed for the day is 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be evil. He makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. He revives my soul and guides me along the right pathways for his name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. For you are with me, who rod and your staff that they come with me. You will spread the table before me in the presence of those who trust me. You have anointed my head with oil. My is Surely your goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. A reading from the first letter of John, chapter 3, verses 16 through 24. We know love by this, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses help. 
Little children, let us love, not in word or speech, but in truth and action. And by this we will know that we are from the truth and will reassure our hearts before him whenever our hearts condemn us. For God is greater than our hearts, and he knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have boldness before God, and we receive from him whatever we ask, because we obey his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment, that we should believe in the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another, just as he has commanded us. All who obey his commandments abide in him, and he abides in them. And then, and by this we know that he abides in us, by the Spirit that he has given us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me, just as the Father knows me and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise, Praise you, Lord, Lord Christ. Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. morning and welcome to what is known affectionately in the church as Good Shepherd Sunday. <laughs> Happens every year on this week of Easter. We love it. There's great hymns that we can't sing, uh, but, but there's always this variant of a shepherd image in the gospel. So it's a good day to deep dive into that living metaphor as Jesus, of Jesus as the Good Shepherd and all of us as sheep. Sort of, it's been an annual thing, so let me quote myself from one year ago. I'm sure you'll remember it. <laughs> sheep are not naturally smart. Apart from being particularly smelly and overwhelmed with matted fur, sheep do not have much in the way of defensive capacity. They have no claws, no fangs, or any particularly frightening roar. Their panicked and cacophonous bleeding only serves to tell the predator exactly where they are. About the best they can do for defense is run away and clump up together so the predator can just pick out the slowest one or the fattest one and leave the rest alone. In extreme danger, sheep tend to scatter. And that leads to no good. They have been known to run off cliffs and fall into deep ravines, so I will let you do your own interpretation of sheep and how that parallels to human nature. It is not a flattering exercise. <laughs> 
But here in Easter season, with all the grace of Jesus suffering death and becoming coming back to live among us and forgive us for all the good news we've been speaking about, about the heavenly blessings that all of that is, um, I have always seen Good Shepherd Sunday as sort of one of those occasions to kind of get humble about where we are in that world, about doing an exposition of what we call low anthropology, keeping us in our place. It's a good time to throw in one of my favorite observations annually, that many want to serve God, but mostly as advisors. And I've not been alone in my estimation of sheep. Here in the time of COVID, we hear all kinds of cries from people who are suspicious or anxious or feel done wrong. Let me quote a news story I read this week from a large newspaper reporting a rally against a state mask mandate. Don't be a sheep, a local sheriff said to loud applause from a mostly maskless crowd gathered in a church parking lot. Does that irony strike any of us? Don't be a sheep. I hope the message inside was different from the one outside. Although we know what he meant. A quick internet search shows that memes and t-shirts and bumper stickers now can be sold and purchased carrying the slogan, don't be a sheep, think for yourself. And while I'm all for critical thinking and for sure systems are imperfect and fail miserably at times, it's not because we don't need systems. We just need to remember that most things human are imperfect and respond rationally, which can be in short supply among sheep. As a result of further study, I have discovered that my estimation of sheep and my yearly harangue about human nature has been unnecessarily harsh. I confess to God and all of you that I have been wrong about sheep. To quote from uh, an in-depth longitudinal study of the nature of sheep printed in the BBC, quote, sheep are actually surprisingly intelligent with impressive memory and recognition skills. They build friendships, stick up for one another in fights, and feel sad when their friends are sent to slaughter. Looks like the news cameras have turned up to cover this incredible revelation. Many sheep were found to form long-term relationships and they even intervene on the behalf of weaker colleagues, supporting each other in fights. So it turns out that sheep are capable of all kinds of admirable traits. It's not so bad to be called sheep. The reason that the shepherd is so valued is that the shepherd leads the sheep, the defenseless ones, to sustenance and safety. And sheep, here again from the study, imprint the shepherd's voice in their brains knowing from experience that following that voice is a good thing for their survival. Amazing. So rather than lamenting our sheepness as a liability today, we might reconsider that cultural baggage that being a sheep implies. Sheep aren't blind followers. Sheep are discerning followers. Thus, we can be sheep and think for ourselves all once. So this opens up a new way of thinking, believing, and following. Inevitably, we have to talk about wolves. The wolf is the natural sheep predator and looks for the lone sheep, the weakened sheep, and the lost sheep as easy prey. Thus, those for us crying for us not to be sheep might more accurately be described as wolves in sheep clothing. I include a humorous cartoon from the Far Side series in the comics on the last page of your bulletin for today. <laughs> to wit, it's a sheep a field full of supposed sheep. One guy stands up and takes off his head and says, wait a minute, isn't anyone here a real sheep? <laughs> it's strangely prescient, that Far Side comic. As much as we hear from the shrill extremes in our world comes from self-styled would-be shepherds 
whipping up fear and, and excluding so-called undesirables from the herd. Wolves in sheep's clothing, mostly feeding their ego or their pocketbook. Radical or rugged individualism of that nature finds no purchase in the gospel. Never has. Jesus never asks us to go it alone. Quite the opposite. His resurrection and life and example invites us to go it together. Together with God and one another. You know, it was inevitable that I brought up the term herd immunity today. It's the title of the sermon, of course. That's found great attention these days because it is seen as critical and desirable and necessary and important. We can't accept that we're, in fact, members of the herd. We leave ourselves vulnerable to the wolves of disease and despair and division and death. So much of what is afoot in skepticism or whataboutism or any other ism that people foist on us as divisiveness is really the work of wolves, not sheep. Certainly not the good shepherd. The whole being sheep and having a good shepherd is wonderfully empowering and that image gives us guidance as to where to look for help and safety and leadership and abundant life. We're capable of so much beauty, and creativity, and love. And while keeping a healthy view of our weakness and foibles is needed and necessary, the Jesus story shows us again and again that we're worthy. We're worthy of, of love, of God's infinite love. We're worthy and powerful in our love for others. This resurrection happens because God chooses it for us and with us. So as it turns out, this revelatory nature of our sheepness is deeply and accurately descriptive. But it is the fact that we are under the care, keeping and feeding of the good shepherd that matters more. Because ego and ambition can draw us into more wolfness than sheepness. So it's important for us to look to the shepherd to help us sort that out. We cannot have a crisis of leadership crisis of followership. And that dogs us a lot. There's so many voices talking out there, taking up valuable space in our consciousness. We have access to more information than ever coming in on us. And in the wake of, for instance, the Minnesota verdict this week, we've been bombarded by statements, postures, positioning, from just about anyone who can grab a microphone, my email is full of official statements from people about the verdict, as if I was waiting for their opinion. Because justice is never going to come from a verdict, and justice does not come from talking. Justice comes from listening, listening to the pain of another and working together to help, like sheep. The voice of the Good Shepherd calls the herd together, not apart. The voice of the Good Shepherd proclaims love for every single one of us. The voice of the Good Shepherd calls us to follow that voice. Because that, among all the noise, is the only voice that matters. Amen. to stand and affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. 
For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, then was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. And that our works may find favor to your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. We pray for Jackson, Joseph Myers, Mary Doyle, Francis Young, Louisa Barrett, who fell and broke her wrist, Mark Lewis, son-in-law to Doug and Kat McConnell, Doris Savage, Chris Smith, Rob, Karen Bonding, Joe Kopp, Sarah Reynolds, Carolyn, Marge Anderson, Diane Hughes, Cherry Bork, David Dunlop, and B.B. Vaughn. For those in military service, SPC August Bolt, Austin, James Badgett, Charles Bell, Thomas Garcia, Jake Hillary, Patrick Hillary, Isaiah Murado, Juan Minera, Catherine Minera, Austin Nicholson, Luke Scrooby, and Paul Stoneburner. The clergy and lay delegates to the special convention of the Diocese of Virginia and the diocesan staff, and for our mission partner, Elk Hill. Give to the departed eternal rest, especially Emery Lahoe Point. Light the shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. And we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our needs and those of others. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. Thank you for dinner. It was wonderful. You're such a good cook. I might need some. seated. Okay. Our wires got crossed. <laughs> Almost literally that FM transmitter and everything else is flying through the air. Sometimes it just does unholy things. So get my glasses. A perennial problem in this nasty era. Good morning and welcome to Emmanuel. If you're visiting or you're here for the first time, we're so glad to have you. I know there's a whole chunk of Joanne Gamble's tribe, which is great. Great to see you all here for the Covenant School production of Les Mis. So a number of our folks are involved somehow, so that's pretty exciting. Can we see you this afternoon? Uh, 
thank you to Norman and Rosalie for hosting movie night on Friday night. It's a little chilly for the folks, it was reported, but a good time was had by all. Black Stallion's a great, a great film. Uh, stay tuned for more of those as the weather gets warmer and we can picnic and do all kinds of things. I want to put something in your brain um, on June the 6th, which is a while from now, but still, park it in your brain. We're having a, a after worship on that day, we're having sort of a book and author day where we're going to have the pop-up bookstore that sits out in front of Mudhouse and Crozet come over. And we're having a, a, an Episcopal educator, children's author, a guy named Roger Hutchison, his best-selling children's author, uh, come. And he's going to do some readings and talk about his, uh, his life and uh, give people an opportunity to talk back to him, but also to talk about how people can, can do their art and, and, and tell stories and do things like that. So it's going to be a great day. We're going to have a food truck. So plan to just stick around and enjoy it. We're going to have you know, kids' games and all that, but it's certainly not just for children. It's just a great time to hang around. And, and the book cart has more than just children's books. Too. It's a celebration of that. Are there any birthdays or anniversaries this week? Jennifer, <laughs> was it yesterday or is it today? Today. It is today. It is today. <laughs> and uh, Jennifer Smith back in action today. Woo! We're glad to have her back in the fold. There was a little COVID break. And then uh, all this planning away thing. So. <laughs> Always glad to have you in the uh, Anyone else? All right, you're a, you're a solo. So let us pray. Watch over your child, O Lord, as her days increase. Bless and guide her wherever she may be. Strengthen her when she stands. Comfort her when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise her up if she falls. And in her heart, may the peace which passes understanding all, abide all the days of her life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Did I forget anything? Well then, uh, oh, New Eucharistic practice. Same deal. We're, we're drop the, the wafer in your hand when you come up. We'll be masked. But we're going to use hand sanitizer instead of gloves. That's actually turned out to be cleaner. So my medical staff has advised me on that. We want to keep you safe, but uh, we also want to be right. Let us with gladness present the offerings and oblations of our life and labor to God. together the presentation were the whole realm of nature mine that were an offering far too small love so amazing so divine 
demands my soul, my life, my all. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you, in your mercy, sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of doing an ending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. The gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. My friends, life is short, and we do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who make the journey with us. So be swift to love and make haste to be kind in the blessing of God who made us who loves us and makes us holy, travel with you and be with you today and forever. Amen. Amen.